Hello everyone, welcome to Mac One Design EMC video channel. In today's session, I'm going to demonstrate how to build a very simple spice-based simulation model to help troubleshoot EMC issues. In this session, you will learn the concept of hot loop in a switch mode power supply design, the impact of parasitic inductors due to the length of a component, and methods to reduce the hot loop area. Look at the um, spice based simulation model. Let's first look at the background of this uh, problem. It is uh, one of the client's module, which is a DC DC converter. As you can see, they were using a TO247 package MOSFET showing on the left hand side of the circuit. The MOSFETs were put in parallel and they are located on the edge of the PCB. The MOSFET module they are using is from International Rectifier, now belong to Infineon, and is this part number here. One thing immediately you can see from the component itself and the, the picture showing here is that a TO247 package often has very long leads. From the simple rule of 20 nano Henry per inch, which states that in a given loop, that any increase of the length will contribute to certain inductance value. So for an increase of an inch, often you will get 20 nano Henry inductance increase. So based on the length of this leads, we can say the parasitic inductance caused by the TO247 is roughly 10 nano Henry, I would say. And during the conducted emission test, they failed uh, between 20, sort of 20 to 30 megahertz range. You can see a bump as a resonance in the uh, frequency scan. What they did next was they measuring the uh, voltage waveform of a switch a switching event. And this is the result. As you can see, for a 48 volt system, the overshoot can reach as high as 100 volts with a resonance frequency measured to be roughly 20 megahertz. This aligns with the spectrum analyzer measurement where we put a current probe, this is a homemade current probe, on the DC input and we measure the common mode currents going through the cables and then you can clearly see there's a resonance bump in the 20 megahertz range so the ringing which observed in the time domain aligns well with the frequency domain measurement in the spectrum analyzer okay so we open the spice based simulation tool in this case we're using symmetrics Symmetrix is a UK-based simulation, like spice-based simulation software, I believe. And I'm using their free version, which doesn't have the full licensed function, but for simulation job like this, it is more than enough. I've built the simple circuit shown here, which you can see we have a 48 voltage source, some DC link capacitance, the switch, I downloaded the SPICE module from International Rectifier website. So this is uh, their SPICE module. And then this part is basically a gate drive circuit with a pulse generator showing one switching event, okay? And here is an RC circuit as the uh, snubber circuit built in, and I put one ohm resistor here to damp uh, uh, the circuit. In order to make the simulation work to the best, click simulator, click choose analysis. We don't need to run many pulses, so 20 microseconds is more than enough. Click advanced options, make sure that the maximum time step is small enough to give you the best resolution you want. For this simulation, one nanoseconds is enough. So click close and click OK. 
Note this is a very basic uh, circuit model, which is very easy to understand. Now the next step is to add a little bit more parasitic parameters into the circuit. Okay? For EMC, when we talk about megahertz level signals, we do care a lot about the parasitic parameters. So in this case, it's a TO247 package. I'll give him a little bit of a parasitic capacitance. So I select one nano farad as the parasitic capacitance of the package itself. As we mentioned, there will be certainly a parasitic inductance in the hot loop area. So I put some inductance value in between. When we say hot loop area, what we meant is from your DC link capacitor to your device, this area is defined as being the hot loop area. As we mentioned, the TO247 has at least 10 nano Henry inductors, plus you have long trays and tracks between your uh, switch and the DC link in this case, so we give him uh, 20 nano Henry. Put 20 nano Henry, click OK. OK, so now we put basically the parasitic inductance value and parasitic capacitance value into the circuit. Then we just need to run the circuit. So if I click run, simulation finished very quickly because we only run for 20 microseconds. Then if I click place, probe, voltage probe, into the points I'm interested, which is the VDS, drain to source voltage, put in here. Ah, so base, sorry, I placed a, a voltage probe, so now I need to just run it again. Okay, there we go. So this simulates the one full switching waveform, and you can see a big spike overshoot on the switching waveform. Do we see any ringings if we zoomed in? Yes, we do see a ringing. And remember, in the actual measurement, we measured the frequency between these two ripples is about 20 megahertz. So that's about 50 nanoseconds. So in this case, we need to measure it. So select cursor, toggle on off. Then I put one on the first peak of the uh, overshoot. And then I put the cursor on the second peak and is measured to be 47 nanoseconds, very close to 50 nanoseconds as we observed uh, during the actual measurement. And the overshoot level is above 70 volts, so very high also as we saw pretty much uh, in the actual test setup. So the simulation model actually worked very well um, to our interests. So the next step is, okay, so if 20 nano Henry is the loop inductance introduced by the trace and track length and also the TO247 um, uh, lead, what about if we reduce this value? So, well, you can reduce the inductance value by shorting the, the length between your DC link capacitance and your actual device. So let's just say we reduce that completely to zero. We still have 10 nano Henry in the package itself. So now if we run the simulation, ah, look. So the dashed line is before we made the change, which is 20 nano Henry inductance in the hot loop area. Now we reduce by 10 nano Henry. You can see the overshoot has been significantly reduced and also it affects the, the ringing frequency. And by reducing this number even further, say if we can reduce it to 5 nano Henry, you will see even less, even less. That's great news, right? So we just need to reduce the hot loop area or we reduce the parasitic inductance, it's the same thing, to achieve a much better switching waveform, okay? So if I zoom it to full, you will see, yeah, and I'll get the cursor 
off. That's a very clean switching waveform we would like to have for our circuit, isn't it? However, this is not part of the this is not the full story. As you can see, now I'm switching off this one. As you can see, we have a pretty well, standard switching circuit showing here. What we did, we added some parasitic capacitance and parasitic inductance. However, we haven't done anything on this side. Notice that this is a ideal voltage source and ideal capacitor. Well, in reality, that's not going to be the case. So what if we add some parasitic component in the DC link? So now I'm going to add an ESL and an ESR to my capacitor model and see what kind of impact it will have in the switching. So just give a very random number. Let's put, um, I don't know, say 100 nanohenry. And here I put, say, 500 milli ohm. And between the voltage source, I also have some inductance value, let's say. I'll put 30 nanohenry. Okay, so now I introduce more parasitic parameters into the circuit and we simulate it again. Look, ah, the overshoot comes back again, even though that I have only 5 nanohenry in the um, in the hot loop area. So if I zoom in, you can see, yeah, you still have a big ringing. So the lesson learned here is not only do you need to reduce the hot loop area here, you might also want to reduce the inductance in, in this area. So if I reduce that one to 10 nanohenry, you can see it now it's reduced again. Well, while the DC link capacitance parasitic uh, parameters cannot be easily reduced because this is due to the way the uh, electrolytic capacitors are, are made, well, you can certainly try to reduce the inductance between your voltage source and the DC link capacitor. So that's again an, another lesson to learn for your switch modes power supply design. As we mentioned, that's the because of the TO247 package, you always end up having at least 10 nanohenry parasitic inductance because it's, it is intrinsically built. So what can we do then? Well, what we should have done in the first place is never to use TO247 in application like this. The reasons that people use TO247 packages are mainly two. One is to achieve a low-cost bomb sheet. The other one is to perhaps to achieve better thermal performance by using less components. Well, these are arguably not true because on the thermal side, you can always use multiple surface mounted devices in parallel to achieve a, a better distributed thermal profile. And then you say, okay, then by having two or three multiple surface mounted devices will increase the bomb cost, then I will say, because now you will have a much quieter switching circuit, then you probably don't need a bulky heavy filter components uh, later on on the front end or, or the output stage. So overall, you probably will still end up saving quite a bit by just removing the necessary of a heavy filter. And also you will achieve a a more compact, smaller size, lighter product. That's what everybody wants. But however, in this case, we cannot really change the um, device package due to the late stage of the project. So what we recommended for this TO247 device is to use something called a spike killer device. Spike killer device is a very old technology, perhaps dating back to the 90s, where Basically, you insert a small ferrite ring core into the legs of the uh, 
package like a TO247. And this ring core, you might say, would not just increase the inductance. Well, it is not like working like that way. The, the spike kill actually is a lossy component. So effectively, it works as a, a snapper circuit to slow down your switching. So as a result, your switching speed has been slowed down. Therefore, the ringing and oscillation has been reduced. It is not the best technology but it works in this case. So in today's session, we built a very simple spice-based simulation model to simulate the impact of a TO247 package device. TO247 package device has long leads, therefore has increased parasitic inductance in the circuit. We demonstrated that by reducing the parasitic inductance, the ripple on the switching waveform can be significantly reduced, resulting in a better EMC performance. Again, if you enjoy this video clip, please share with your colleagues. And if you like, please subscribe to our video channel. Thank you very much.